Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Brother, I'm going to be moving, bouncing, and doing my thing up here at school. Have mercy on the folks. Y'all all right? Okay, I don't want no one to get too cold in here. Again, and you have to understand, there's multiple parables in here, and I could, I could spend a lot of time in describing the differences between them. It's an amazing study, but I really want to get something in your heart tonight. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. God is a treasure. Salvation is a treasure. There's a lot of people spending a lot of time and energy on a lot of things. But when it's all said and done, you're going to find out that there's really only one thing that's a treasure. Are you hearing me? The which when a man hath found, he hideth. Well, in other words, it's so important to him, he don't want no one to get it from him. You better protect your salvation. You better protect your relationship and your walk with God. Even against family. Sister Crow and I were talking prior to service and talking how well, and she, she brought it about railers. Railers are anybody that, that, that rail and are negative. And kind of, I don't care if they're family or they're You need them out of your life if they rail against the things of God, the church of God, the past. You, you, rail, you don't want them in your life because this is a treasure. Okay? For the joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath. Now, when he talked to that rich young ruler, he was only repeating himself. And buyeth that field. You can place your Bibles down. Let's talk to the Lord. Jesus, we love you. Our minds and our hearts and our flesh seem to rage war against your will. God, I pray somehow, some way, we can truly find, seek, and pursue that hidden treasure. Help us today, God. Allow me, Lord, the unction, Holy Ghost, to speak to your wonderful, beautiful saints of God tonight and encourage someone to seek that true hidden treasure in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated. A few, few days ago on October the 9th, an amateur scuba diver was diving off the coast of Israel and he found a three-foot sword from the 900 year old sword from the crusades he spotted the sword among some other ancient artifacts on the seabed and according to a statement of the israeli antiquities authority published uh the monday following he was diving on october 9th when he spotted the sword which boasts a a, a foot-long hilt and uh it was amongst some anchors, stone anchors, metal anchors, and pottery fragments. For 900 years, this artifact, this treasure trove of antiquity was waiting simply for someone to look in its direction. It was there to be seen, but it was waiting for someone to be paying attention. It was an amateur diver that saw it plainly on the sea floor. It wasn't professionals with thousands of hours. It, it wasn't an archaeological team that could on site tell you everything about it. Just a new, curious diver looking. Seeking and searching are Christian attributes. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Everybody say seek. seek. Searching is also something that should be a part of our Christianity and our, our new nature. Search the scriptures. Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and, and they are they which testify of me. Find. And I'm throwing a curveball at you with this one because I just felt that this would be Humorous, fun to put here. Whoso findeth a wife, 
findeth a good thing. You may treasure your wife, but <laughs> and obtain the favor of the Lord. Yep. Psalms 119 and 2 declares, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Qualifying the value and the importance of seeking the Lord is because it's descriptive, descriptive of who you are or where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. We know who, what you really love by watching your actions. Matthew 12 and 35 declares a good man had a good treasure, good, good, good treasure of the heart, bringing forth good things. And the evil man out of evil treasure, evil treasure, bringing forth evil things. True treasure, what we're talking about tonight, eternal treasure, is found only in Christ. It was interesting to me to find out that the word treasure translated in Greek is thesaurus. <laughs> you tell the college students in here because they uh, all peaked up. I really probably couldn't put together a message without a thesaurus. I can't write an article without one. Anybody not know it? Don't raise your hand. A thesaurus is a is a word which refers to a treasury of words. So in the original, the word referred to a treasure chest or storehouse where a great treasure is kept. In fact, a few years back, back in 2014, there's a story that came out of more of the Northern California couple who were casually walking around their property when they, they noticed what looked like metal sticking out of the ground and they began to look, dig and unearth something, they realized that someone had buried eight metal cans in their yard. Even more fascinating than the cans that were buried was what was inside those cans. 1,400 plus gold coins dating back to the mid-1800s. That find is now called the Saddle Ridge Hoard. And it turns out that the coins were worth approximately $10 million. What an amazing find. The stuff of fairy tales and daydreams, right? You've all had that moment where you just wish you'd peek in the corner of an attic or in a basement or find a box or an old suitcase or I, uh, was an assistant to a pastor that was talking about a remodel they did and they got a building and they gutted it and while they were gutting it, they were ripping up the floor to put on a new floor and they found a floor safe. Oh, and everybody got excited. <laughs> they just knew the money they needed to pay off their building was going to be in that safe. They just knew somebody had forgotten it was there and they're going to open that and it's going to be stacked to the brim with pure financial delights. Oh, they broke out every tool they could find, Sister Crystal. And they, everybody that was there was trying to bang and clang and get that safe open. Sister Bruce, they finally got it open. And to their elation, they found one solitary dime. <laughs> These folks in California found over $10 million. In fact, actually, with some of the research I did, it was on closer to eleven. The story of this couple that stumbled upon this hidden treasure, it makes you think, it makes you wonder, it, it causes contemplation. How long did they live in that property? How long had they just been walking by or stepping over this treasure that was right in their backyard? How many times had they maybe even stepped on the spot? How, how many times in, in forlorn worry over financial issues and struggles did they stare out their kitchen window into that backyard and 
searching for answer, answers and not realize that there was treasure. I don't know, maybe they had some difficult nights, difficult times where they just didn't know how they were going to make ends meet. Maybe they had used to go ahead and deal with their anxiety by digging and growing a garden or planting a tree had they maybe tilled the soil near or above or next to that treasure that would change their lives. Because it was right there all the time, in front of them, waiting to be noticed. It's amazing how many of us go through life every day trusting in our own ability to accomplish our goals. We, we trust in our ability to visualize our future. We trust in our ability to take care of business, right? Our ability to control our universe. Yet we lack the ability to recognize the hidden treasure right in front of us. What hidden treasure am I talking about? A hidden treasure that's worth more than $10 million worth of gold coins. I know. What? I don't know. I could see a lot of treasure in $10 million worth of gold coins, Pastor. And I know some of you are sitting here still think that $10 million would be everything. Until you found yourself in hospital. Yeah. And the doctor said, there's nothing else we can do. In other words, money can't do this. Sadly, some today are still so caught up in, in, in the pleasure of what the world calls treasure. And you've got so much of it around you that you don't see the real treasure buried in front of you. I'm talking about a hidden treasure. The one that if you'll recognize it, it will forever and eternally change your life. The one that truly is the answer of all problems, needs, and desires. Yeah. The greatest hidden treasure I'm speaking of is Jesus. There's nothing more valuable in this world than having a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's been so many funerals recently and so many people struggling that even in the shadow of the possibility of finding 10 million, it pales in my need of Jesus, Amen. my want of him. I've learned how to be abased and how to abound. But the bottom line is, I need Jesus. But for the sake of some here that still struggle, the question that comes to your mind, what does Jesus offer me? For starters, simply, he guarantees a peace that passes understanding. He, 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 and some of you, if you'll, if you'll get this one, you'll mellow out on your search and your need to think that you need someone in your life. He guarantees an unconditional love. Come on. Thank <laughs> you, Jesus. Regardless of yeah. your past. He, he, he guarantees provision of your basic needs. He, he and gives us the greatest guarantee of eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. What could be better than that? Sadly, I know that some within the sound of my voice and some here have things that consume you. You have things that you treasure, things that don't have the guarantee of the kingdom of heaven. What really is the good of all the other treasures of this world? What good is 
even $10 million if I don't have anything to look forward to after this life. In our text in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 44, Jesus said this about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it. He goes and sells all that he has, buys that field. He's a sellout. Sell the world, sell the things, sell the the, 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 the strive for popularity and social acceptance and selling all the things that the world that you see all the traffic and all the lights and all the busyness and all the political wrangling and all. It's someone that says, I sell all that for Jesus. The value of the kingdom of heaven is priceless. The, the, the value of kingdom of heaven is worth more than being right politically or being right in an argument or being right in career and financial choices. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is worth more than all the treasures in this world. Uh, I don't care who finds the next great hoard. Oh. I believe Job punctuates this idea. And when he had lost everything, and he, Brother Bruce, in a moment at the deepest, most gut-wrenching part of his trial of, of what he was going through, when he lost everything, when he lost family, when he lost children, when he lost finances, when he lost friends, when he lost the communion and unity with his wife, when he asked what he could find, it was not any of those things. Oh, that I might know where I might find him, that we would get an understanding of a revelation of the hidden treasure that the world constantly is throwing dirt and muck and stuff and trials and things and stuff to try to bury Jesus. Oh, that's the hidden treasure today. Oh, I know go about the right race, but I'm running the race that he set before me. I'm running that race. Keep your stuff. Keep your things. I found a hidden treasure. Not even if the doctors don't have what they think I need, I still have all that I need. Oh, and so much so that when you find it, when you really find it, <laughs> it'll be well worth it to trade in all the dreams of finding a buried treasure and just focus on the kingdom of heaven. In comparing the man Jesus mentioned in Matthew 13 to the couple who found the gold coins, I wonder how many times the man had passed by that field with the hidden treasure in it. And he never noticed it. I wonder how many times we come and go from church without ever realizing the hidden treasure in it. I wonder how many times in all your seeking and buying and pursuing that you meander back and forth and never realize the hidden treasure. I wonder how many times he passed by that field in his life before he finally outside and found the hidden treasure of the kingdom of heaven. How, how, how many times had he dreamed of finding something more in his life? Oh, I've talked with some of you enough to know. I've heard your statements. And, oh, if I'd have known this, and if I'd have done that, and if I'd have... With greater passion than, oh, I thank God that I found this hidden treasure. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. How often did this guy 
walk by, beaten down by life, worn out, maybe confused, may, maybe just struggling to get by, maybe even to the point of suffering, depression. And yet here he was, walking right past the very thing he needed. Had he let his family by there, had he brought his wife and his children and family members, had he gone by and they're all caught up in his depression and they're all caught up as he meanders through life, unsatisfied and bitter. And here he was walking right past the very thing that not only he, but his family also needed in the answer to all their dreams. What about you? Have you truly discovered the hidden treasure that Jesus offers? Or is he just a trinket? A bumper sticker? That's the way of life. Have you truly discovered the hidden treasure that Jesus offers? Or is it just something else in your curio cabinet of things in life? Has the kingdom of heaven been revealed to you so it's your primary focus in life? The one thing you value more than any other treasure of this world. Life happens quickly. Life can be demanding and challenging. But you don't have to do life alone. Don't move too quickly. You might be rushing right past a hidden treasure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I know, I know, I know. You, you, you've got a, a whole life and you've got stories of woe and you got a pan full of pain you could display. You're busy and what are you talking about here, hidden treasure in the church? What are you talking about this Jesus thing? I, I'm tired. I'm faint. I'm, I'm wore out. I, there's COVID and there's jobs and there's an economy and there's a toilet paper shortage. And come on, come on. Come on, Pastor. Preach. Bless God, we're down to sippy cups for Pastor in church and his water. Pastor's so bad off he had to borrow a handkerchief last week. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Keeping your attention. If you only knew the trouble I was going through, I have things that I just got to do. I, I don't have time to make it to church. And I, I don't have time for prayer. I've got all this other treasure. I got, I got hobbies and habits and family and grandbabies and headaches and sickness. And I don't have time for this. In Genesis 25 and 34 says, Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. And thus Esau despised his birthright. He got faint. He got tired. He got weary. He got worn. I, I, it's always been my birthright. I got born in this thing a long time, Pastor. You're not going to stir me up. You're not going to. Ah, you have no idea what's going on in my house. And some of you have despised the treasure, that hidden birthright in the things of God. You've allowed the things and the, 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 the frivolousness of the world. I dare say the, some of these seats are empty today from people that are, are, are chasing Fool's gold. Oh, yeah, I get it. You're here, so it's okay to chase fool's gold the other days. Well, that's all you're about, yeah, because you're not chasing souls for Jesus so that they'll find it. Listen, there's nothing wrong with Esau wanting porridge. The problem was what he gave up. Yeah. 
It's an ouch, brother. There's a lot of amazing people of God that have had to settle for a seat because they wouldn't seek the Savior. Because sometimes the real question is not whether something is good for you spiritually, but what are you giving up to get it? This story is so important to understand that even the writer of Hebrews stated, and as he saw, who for one morsel. What is it, folks? Sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited a blessing, he was rejected. Have you got tired of the field of treasure? Have you gotten tired of the house of God? Have you have you become weary with chasing out in the, the dirt fields of the world that you start despising the harvest field of heaven? Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hidden in the field, the which when a man hath found. Sometimes you have to understand, we know you find it when nothing else matters. We know you found it because of your joy. We know you found it because you'll sell everything else to get. You will constantly miss out on the true revelation and riches of Christ until you actually come to the place where you can sell out like the parable that Jesus spoke of. What's the point? What are you getting to do, Pastor? The point is that the kingdom of heaven is so valuable that a wise person will do anything they can to get it. A wise. Yeah, often don't know where wisdom is until the end of a matter. Will take everything they have and get it up for something even better. I often hear people giving excuses as, I'm addicted. I've been doing it so long. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with Esau wanting porridge. The, the proof is in a real pudding. You have to ask and look and survey and do a great accounting story is told of a young man who was trying to save money and heat his home. He would go and cut wood out of the, the forest and then he got to know the workers at a wood shop near his home and he would stop in and be able to pick up their leftover wood scraps to burn in a wood burner. And it was right before Thanksgiving, he stopped in to pick up a load of the scraps and he walked in the front door and told them that he was there to pick up the wood. And One of the workers there wheeled out two bins like usual to the loading doors and helped him load the wood into his truck. Usually the wood was just chunks of pine, but this time they looked like decoys, duck decoys. Young man asked the worker, they said, are you sure that you're giving me the right wood here? Because these are unpainted duck decoys. The guy said he was sure, and after looking at the decoy, he realized, yeah, I guess it's got a few cracks in them, so we figured they were throwing them away because of the cracks. The man insisted that he had the right stuff and rode the man's truck up and said goodbye. The young man took the load of wood and promised that he would return the carts back as soon as he got the one unlo wood unloaded. The man is watching, hey, there's no hurry. It's going to be a long Thanksgiving weekend, and you can bring them back after. The young man went home and unloaded the decoys into a big pile in the basement. Saw that his wood burner stove was low, so he loaded some decoys in it and started to unload the rest of them. 
he headed back to work, and after work, he went home, took out the rest of the wood, decided to take the carts back to the wood shop. When he pulled up in his truck, two men come running out of the building, demanded that he bring back the decoys. And the young man said, why? What, what's going on? And with an urgency and the voice, one of the men had told him that you had taken their entire, he had taken their entire Christmas inventory of decoys worth tens of thousands of dollars by mistake. The shop owner went on and on about calling the police and trying to find him and driving around for the past three hours in a panic because he had taken their entire Christmas inventory decoys worth thousands of dollars by mistake. The young man said, wait a minute, hold on, and pointed to the, the man who worked there who gave him the, the carts of decoys. And the man looked back, kind of gave him a deer in the headlights, looked and walked back into the shop. And a forlorn, the guys looked, the manager asked if the young man still had them because they were incredibly valuable. Each decoy had taken over a week to make, and they needed to get them back. Being stunned by the whole situation, he told them, you know, I, I, I you know, honestly, I, I threw a few of them into the wood stove, but I'll, I, I'll bring the rest back. The young man went home and loaded up a few hundred decoys and brought them back to the shop. What a story. Value is often in the eye of the beholder. The decoys to that young man were worth nothing but heat to him. Though they were worth tens of thousands of dollars to somebody else, to him it was heat. You see, Jesus used treasure and pearls to illustrate a spiritual point because we all understand treasure. Jesus never said what the buried treasure was worth. He just said the person that found it sold everything he had to acquire it. The treasure was worth more than everything else in the world. And I don't think any of us really have a true idea just how valuable the kingdom of God is. Because if we fully comprehended just how valuable it is, I believe it would, it would really blow us away. Churches would be full. It wouldn't be sticky to ask people to be early to prayer. There wouldn't be moments of conflict all the time because the treasure would be what was important. But it seems we've placed so much value on the dirt of opinions, attitudes, that we've missed the value of the treasure and misplaced our value and misplaced our treasure to where we've become bitter towards the real treasure. Coming to church is more of a a burden and a problem than a desire and a pursuit. There was a British treasure hunter not too long ago discovered a huge stash of Roman coins that were buried in a field in the southwest of England. His name was Dave Crisp. He found a pot full of 52,000 coins. And they were from the 3rd century A.D. They weighed more than 350 pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Worth $5 million. Been there that long, just waiting for someone 
the Sebastian Inlet in Florida. It's a popular place to scuba dive and swim and snorkeling. And there was spear fishing going around in the area. But not any one of those folks over the years came up with any millions. Nobody found any silver, any gold. And there had always been ships in that shallow water. All the fishermen. I can imagine a fisherman out there fishing and getting upset because he's got a hook stuck on something and had to rip it away and curse the luck because they had hung a hook down beneath the water and couldn't see that they had hooked a chunk of gold. One day some explorers decided, you know, there's got to be something down here. So they went out and made surveys and they tested and they went under and there it was in shallow water. So shallow that anyone here with just an average ability to swim could have just swam to the bottom and brought up millions of dollars of treasure. But there it was. And they didn't know. They're everywhere. On your phones, just look at Brother Lulu right now. On tablets, like I'm using. Desktops. You'll find them in hotel rooms, prison cells, coffee tables, desks, attics, basements in grandmother's hope chest. Some are ornate, some plain, some leather, and some calfskin. Some hardly used, and others worn out. Bibles are everywhere. But they too are like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. Mm -mm -mm. And yet, just like Sebastian Inlet, the coast of Somerset, England, Northern California, the Israeli coast, and all the other places past and in the future where treasure has been found and will be found. Just need someone to realize what's right in front of them. Because in this precious book that has survived burning and banning, neglect, unbelief, discard, disdain, disregard, and dust, Three weeks in a row I've been able to say that word. Our treasures beyond your wildest dreams. And I will tell each and every one of you tonight that I believe there are still some here that have not yet discovered the full treasure of what we have in Christ. I'm going to say it again. I believe, and even some of you have been around a while, you have yet to discover the full treasure that we have in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about when you find that treasure, that this world will start to grow strangely dim. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's all stand. And I don't believe it was a cut, a slight, but a line of demarcation in the treasure trove of sand that Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. They could have handed him 10 million and he never would have done that. Well, there's a treasure trove right here. There's an eternal treasure trove right here. And all your searchings and all your desires and all what you're looking for and everything that consumes you from sun up to sundown. treasure right in front of you. Amen. Amen. It's right in front of you. 
you young people need to hear me. You will not find all that it fills the void in you in things, people. Social popularity. Come on, Pastor. Come on. You want it is not there. The world will tell you all types of things that you need to pursue and to chase. But there's only one thing that will answer. There are broken lives, broken hearts, and broken minds in this house that are making it because they've gotten a hold of that hidden treasure. Oh, I'm telling you, I testify right now. I'm only here because of that hidden treasure. I've had money. I've had stuff. I've had popularity. I've had all. But I'm going to tell you right here and now, it's a lie compared to the hidden treasure that we find in y'all. Oh, that I could get someone on fire to be a treasure hunter in the house of God, to be someone willing to dig, to search, to seek, and to find the hidden treasure that's right in front of you.